Good morning, Calvary Chapel young people. How are we doing this morning? Good morning. Good morning. All is well in Texas. The freeze is over. Yep. Uh, the weather is warming up. Yep. Uh, we're able to get out and do a little fishing, even though there's very few fish right now. It's a problem there. But that's okay. If you remember last week, we studied about God's power and our need to have faith in him. Today, we're going to talk a little more about God's power and having and trusting Jesus in facing our fears in his strength. So th this, uh, this lesson, we're going to talk about peace, calm, meaning peace, meaning calm. We're going to talk about being still, that's being thoughtful. And we're going to talk about Jesus' power. And Julia will kind of highlight each one of those for you. So when we talk about having God's peace, we, we can rest in God's peace knowing his love for us. We've seen so many ways that he loves us. We know that what he wants for us, his intentions for us, are good. He, he wants to provide good for us. And he has limitless power over everything, over life, over creation itself. And having that peace, the disciples might have or should have actually been able to sleep through the storm. But they hadn't, they hadn't gotten that peace in him yet. We're going to talk about being still. So by being still... That doesn't mean that you freeze like a, like a statue. That means that, that you don't feel like you have to get up and go fix everything. I have a problem with that. I'll tell you the truth. It, it means that trying to fix everything on our own, it, we're, we're, missing, we're missing God's power. We, if we first seek God's guidance and then act according to his will, we are being still. And waiting for his direction. And when we do that, we see Jesus' power. His amazing display over that, that storm and his ability to quiet that storm should give us confidence that Jesus can help us through any situation. And when we face trouble, we can count on Jesus to help us because he has power over all things. All right, I want to lead us in our opening prayer. Okay. And uh, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we're so grateful for the opportunity to come and uh, spend time with the young people of our church, Lord, to share the words that you give us. We ask that we would be thoughtful, careful teachers. Um, and loving teachers, Lord, even though we're thousands of miles apart, uh, we're able to communicate through this uh, video process, and we're so grateful for that, Lord. And we just ask that we learn how we can depend on your strength, and through de learning to depend on your strength, we will have that calmness and stillness of spirit that you so much want us to have and that we so often do not enjoy because we don't come to you first. We run around, we try to fix it ourselves rather than learning to depend on you for everything that we need, whether it is uh, going to school, getting good grades, uh, getting a job, working, food, whatever it is, Lord, we know that we must learn to depend on you. And through that, we will have that calmness of spirit. So be with us this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So will you take the first reading for us, sweetie? Yes, we're going to start in Matthew. And we're going to be reading Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Three and Mark. it's three versions of the same story. So we start in Matthew 8, verses 22 through 27. And verse 22 seems a little out of place, but it says, 
But Jesus said to him, Follow me, and let the dead bury their own. There was a disciple who wanted to follow Jesus, but his uh, father had died and he wanted time to go bury his father and take care of personal needs. And that's why we start with the uh, verse 22. And it says, But Jesus said to him, Follow me and let the dead bury their own. Now when he had gotten into a boat, his disciples followed him. And the reason he had gotten into the boat, there were multitudes of people that Jesus had been healing and uh, preaching to, and it was time that he had a rest. So, <clears throat> so we read in, in verse 23 again, Now when he got into the boat, his disciples followed him. And suddenly a great tempest, that means storm, arose on the sea, so that the boat was covered with waves. But he was asleep. Then his disciples came to him and woke him, saying, Lord, save us. We are perishing. But he said to them, Why are you fearful? O ye of little faith. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the sea, and there was a great calm. So the men marveled, saying, who can this be that even the winds and the sea obey him? So Mark writes about the same situation, about the same time. In Mark chapter 4, verses 35 through 41, he writes, On the same day when evening had come, he said to them, Let us cross to the other side. Now when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat, as he was, and the other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling. But he was in the stern, that's the back end of the boat, asleep on a pillow. And they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Dying. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. But he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly, and one said to the other, Who can this be, that even the wind and the sea obey him? So we see in the comments in 41, that they knew Jesus could do many miracles, but they didn't know how strong and how, what great control he had over the earth. And sometimes the word fear makes it sound like that he, they are frightened, that they are afraid of Jesus. And I think it's, it's probably worth saying they may have had some, some fear like that. But fear can also mean kind of an awesome respect, just a, a not able to wrap your head around what he just did. And because you can't understand it, it makes you feel very uneasy. And so I think that kind of fear is also fair to look to. I, and, and that's what Jesus wants. He, he doesn't want us to be scared of him. No, he doesn't. But he wants us to be most respectful of him. So would you read Luke now? Okay, now in Luke it's uh, another version of the same story. It's Luke 8, 22 through 25. Now it happened on a certain day that he got into a boat with his disciples. And he said to them, Let us cross over to the other side of the lake. And they launched out. But as they sail, sail but, excuse me, but as they sailed, he fell asleep, and a windstorm came down on the lake, and they were filling with water and were in jeopardy. And they came to him and awoke him, saying, Master, Master, we are perishing. Then he arose and rebuked the wind 
and the raging of the water, and they ceased, and there was calm. But he said to them, Where is your faith? And they were afraid, and marveled, saying to one another, Who can this be? He commands even the winds, water, and they obey him. So I have a couple questions. Okay, uh-oh. Jumping ahead of question time with my own questions. I see. So we read the same story in three different Gospels. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Well, in the Hebrew, they often on important points would re, uh, repeat the same story or the same paragraphs or same sentences several different times to emphasize the importance of what they were trying to teach. And God did that throughout the Old Testament, and I think we're seeing it here in the New Testament also. So kind of like three different authors finding that event to be so important, they described it from as what they knew about it. And if you think about it, learning to put all our trust in Jesus is probably one of the most important things we could ever do. Okay. And then the other one is about what a word means because it's used by all three of the authors. And Jesus, they, the, they all say, they use the same word, they say, he rebuked the wind. What does rebuke mean? To rebuke means to cause the wind to cease or the waves to cease. He put a stop to what nature was doing. So imagine you're out on uh, your front yard and the wind is blowing or it's, let's say it's raining really hard and Jesus says, stop, rain. And instantly it stops. And that's what happened in this story. Okay, thank you. All right. Do we have yeah. any more questions? Oh, do we ever. <laughs> Okay. okay. Would you like me to ask them? No. I get to ask them. Okay, go. All right. What happened after the disciples started sailing across the lake? It, there was a terrible storm. It was huge. And you think about where we live in Half Moon Bay, where we live, where the, the storms come in from the ocean. And sometimes they can be very, very scary. And we have the benefit of understanding that when the when the the storms are coming in from the ocean that they're very strong and they tend to break up a little bit when they hit land. Sometimes we get dumped on, but those storms can come in from the ocean very, very strong. And that's why the fishermen that live in our town and go out and fish, they watch the weather because a storm for us, if it's a, when we're on land, if it's a strong storm, it's even stronger out on the water. And it's more dangerous. It's been much dangerous. And so the, many of the disciples were fishermen, and they had been experienced sailors before they, they began following Jesus. So they knew storms well, and they knew the dangers of, of storms. And this, this particular storm made them afraid. And so that tells us it was a really, really big, big storm. storm. Absolutely. Yeah. Because we see at the, at the harbor where we live, uh, they have the red flags, mm -hmm. and they put up one when the wind and the waves are at a certain level, and they put up two when it's a higher level. And they also have a third flag, which we don't see very often. It's two reds with a black square on it, and that means it is really severe. And most of the boats stay, right. what they call small boats, stay in harbor. Where it's safe. All right. Question number two. A terrible storm. Whoops, I went the wrong way. What did the disciples become more afraid of? Well, the storm was getting bigger. So you're riding your bike. You're going down a hill, right? And your brakes go out. Either, whether you use foot brakes, you push them back to, to brake your bike, or you have hand brakes, or you use a combination of both. 
And you know, there may be new kinds of bike brakes on bikes these days. I haven't been on a bike That's in a while. That's true. But you're going down a hill, you're going faster, 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 your brakes aren't working, which means you can't stop, which means you're out of control. And well, how do you how do you react? I mean, some people will jump off their bikes, some people will learn they know how to move their bike from side to side to slow it down. But but most often when we're out of control, it's very, very scary. And for the disciples who knew this was a bad storm and knew they had no control over the weather, they didn't have brakes to control the weather. The only thing they can do to think of to keep them safe was to hold on to anything that provided some kind of stability. They must have been very scared and they told Jesus about it. What should have they really have done? Well, they might have just rested like Jesus was resting. They might have had faith and confidence that Jesus knew what was going on and Jesus would protect them. Or at least go to Jesus, wake them up, right. and say, stop the storm. Right. Or ask for him to help. But instead what they did was they went to him and said, don't you even care that we're dying out here? Yeah, they just panicked. They did. They panicked. And sometimes when you're panicking... You say stuff that's not really very smart. That's true. Yeah. But what we see is it's a learning time for the disciples. They saw miracles on land. They saw where he fed the 5,000. He healed the sick. He's raised the dead. Uh, so every time they see these types of situations, their faith becomes a little stronger, a little stronger. The storm, and they saw how he handled the storm, made his faith a little, their faith a little stronger. So, in the same way in our lives, the more we depend on Jesus, and the more we see him working in our lives, and taking care of difficult situations, the stronger our faith becomes in him. Okay, question number four. What did Jesus say to the storm? Jesus said to the storm, be still. So remember, he was sleeping. And he wasn't worried about the storm. But the disciples didn't know his power. And they didn't know his abilities. And so they didn't really understand why Jesus was going to be able to sleep through this. They were not in control. They saw a very obvious threat, and they were afraid. And we've been afraid. Sure. We've been afraid sometimes. We sometimes find in our normal life situations that something's going on that we can't control. And it may be that this story is in the Bible, and this story was told by three of the Gospel writers, because it's meant to offer us comfort and confidence not only in the figurative meanings, so it isn't telling us that Jesus will help us when there's a really big weather storm, when there's a whole lot of wind and rain, although, they, they, yes, you literally, know. he will help us in those situations. But when they say it's figuratively, they're using the storm and the rain and the wind as a picture. So maybe it's not actually raining, but maybe there's somebody really sick in your family. Or maybe it's not, the wind isn't really blowing really hard, but maybe somebody's being really mean to you. So storms can mean weather, but they also can mean times where we're afraid, where normal life is not pleasant, and where we're having problems. And it makes us fearful and worried sometimes. And that's what Jesus is trying to teach. And that's why we see it this this event repeated three times. We use the term story. It's not really a story. It's a historical fact. It's a and it's repeated three times to underscore the importance of learning to depend totally on Jesus for everything we do, need and do. And also, though, in, in this account, that in this, the situation where the disciples and Jesus were on this boat and where Jesus said, peace, 
and be still. He said that to the weather. That's literal. That really happened. It's also figurative. Like, and, and what that means, it's like a picture of what he says to us, what, he can, what we want to hear him saying when we're facing a problem and our situations are making us upset. He wants us to have some peace, have peace in him and to be still, to, to calm down a little bit and hand the situation over to Jesus and pray to Jesus and ask for Jesus to help with the situation. And unfortunately, in so many times in our lives, when we have these storms that Julia was talking about in our life, we are running everywhere. Right. And when we exhaust everything that we know to do, we finally get on our knees and we pray. Yeah. And uh, if we would pray at the beginning, it would save us a lot of worry and a lot of upset stomachs. Sure thing. So then what happened to the storm? The storm became just, it was gone. It was instantly gone. Imagine having that power over nature. Uh, we talk about, everybody talks about the weather, but nobody can do anything about it. Right. Well, Jesus can, and he did. And we have three accounts of him doing that. So just like when we talked about the bike before, when we first learned how to ride bikes, and this is true of Mr. Rudy and me as well, um, we weren't we weren't a hundred percent sure we were going to survive. But I remember when I first rode a bike, I was scared. Oh, sure, and I think we all were. And and most people, when they're learning how to ride a bike, and not all, and you may be different, you may have learned without training wheels, but lots of people have training wheels on them. So you've got the two tires, and then you've got those two little wheels that help you from falling over. And, and they call those training wheels because you're new at it. And these were new disciples. They were kind of babies in being disciples, right? They had only been with Jesus a short period of time. And so they were, they were learning how to trust in Jesus, just like we have to learn how to trust in Jesus. And they saw something, and they, not very well, but they did reach out to Jesus for help. And they saw his power. And that gave him confidence. They gave them that gave the disciples confidence that Jesus would help them and could help them, and they can trust in him to do that. And as we read the Bible, and as we study these these things that happen in the Bible and how the disciples were helped and how people were healed, then then we can have confidence too. And so what that means is when we run into trouble, we may wonder whether this is a big enough trouble to bother Jesus with it. Is there ever any problem that's too small or too big for Jesus? No. Never. 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 If we need help of any kind, and it may be help with ourselves. If we're doing something as simple as trying to remember how to do a thing, even a thing that we've done many times before, we can always reach out to Jesus. And if we could... Do that knowing that he, we, he loves us, that our peace is in him. If we could steady ourselves long enough to stop fretting and panicking over the disaster that's going to happen if this problem doesn't get solved, and we lean on him, we have the opportunity for him to come back to us with the help that he is so powerful to provide. And if we look at the disciples' life after Christ ascended into heaven and how they went into all the known nations of the time and spread the gospel. That is an amazing event, and they only did that because they had confidence That's that right. the Lord would lead them and guide them. So great things can be accomplished once we learn to depend on Jesus and let him direct our lives. And, and, we, and we just have evidence of that in the disciples' lives. Yeah, and that's why we read about them. Yep, absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. Would you lead us in our closing I prayer? I will, I will. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for teaching us how to have faith 
and for showing us in the Bible that through faith we can get help solving our problems, that we can ask you, we can ask Jesus to help us to solve the problems, to take away the problems, or to solve the problems that are too big for us. And we know, Lord, that we won't always get the wishes we want to come true. But we also know, more importantly, we know that you love us and you will help us get through situations and that you always know what is happening, that you're in control, and that when we walk with you, we will have your strength to solve any problem, to face any problem, or to deal with anything that we're asked to deal with. So Lord, we thank you for that confidence. We thank you for helping us to develop our faith. We ask you to remind us when we forget that when we have a problem, you are the first door we should be knocking on. You are the first person we should be talking to, praying to, and asking for help. Help us to remember that every day, Lord. We ask you to take care of our church family. We ask you to take care of our, our families and our friends. We ask you to put your hand on our nation, heal the things that are wrong, and strengthen us where you know better than anyone where we need to be strengthened. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. We say amen. Have a great week. See ya.